everyone, welcome to Onyx Pages. I'm in Jerry. Before I get into this video, I would like to say thank you to Maya of Maya Reads for my very first shout out on Onyx Pages. And I'd also like to thank Sir Booksage for letting me know that there was a shout out about this channel. Um, I have, uh, since I've been on, on BookTube, I've watched hundreds of videos and I have watched many videos about booktube discussions that talk about the booktube community, how friendly it is, how cliquey it can be, how non-diverse it is, um, how white the focus is in terms of the books that are read and the booktubers that get the most likes. Um, and so I certainly have a clear and critical and positive view of booktube. Uh, and on Friday, I just felt all the feels because I was supported by a booktuber who I've never met, and I really appreciate that. So, Maya, thank you so much for shouting out this channel. I'm glad that you've enjoyed the content that I've started to develop, and I've watched your channel, which is wonderful, and I'm also going to link it uh, below. So I hope that others will find your channel uh, if they haven't already and can enjoy the depth of knowledge uh, that you bring and the perspective that you bring to reading. One of the things that I really like about Maya Reed's channel is that unlike other channels that focus on a particular uh, area of of, uh, of literature and then have maybe one or two videos of diverse books, Maya weaves in her analysis of diverse voices into all of her reads. And so she might have just a regular TBR or a wrap up video or a book review video and she will mention that there is, uh, you know, an intersex protagonist or that the, um, the main character is a person of color or that there's a polyamorous relationship in the, in the story. And I think that that's one of the ways that booktubers can become more self-reflexive and more critical about the reads that uh, they're presenting on, that we are presenting on. So Maya, thank you very much and I hope that uh, one day we can buddy read. So that is my shout out. Uh, so this video, this part of it's going to be hopefully pretty short. I'm going to be uh, doing a review on this book, which is Binti by Nady Okorafor. I'm going to be going through the seven calorie shell rating for this book. And then I'm going to pause and move over to the second part of the video, which is going to be a buddy read with Pretty Brown Eye Reader, who is uh, an amazing booktuber whose booktube channel I subscribe to very soon after I started Onyx Pages. Um, I really love Pretty Brown Reader's uh, way of talking about books. I love her humor and her personality. And uh, it was just a pleasure to meet with her online and record a discussion about this book, Binti. So that's gonna be attached to the first half of this video. So let's just get started and I will tell you what my rating is for Binti. Binti is a story of um, a young girl named Binti who takes off from her family home to go to a very prestigious intergalactic university. And in order to do so, because it's a science fiction, she gets on a spaceship. And this story, so this is the first of a three part, uh, three part set of books. In this story, she, we, are following, we follow Binti uh, from her family home to the spaceship and then to the university and it sort of ends once she gets there. Um, so that is the story. There's a lot of different things that happen to her on that spaceship, which is the main setting for this first story in the trilogy. We're going to talk a little bit more about the, the synopsis and try to stay away from spoilers later. So as you may recall, I have a seven calorie shell rating system, and I'm going to go through each of the criteria that I look for when I read books. So the first is plot. I'm going to give a full calorie shell for, uh, to Binti for plot. The plot was great. Um, it, it was a novella, so it was shorter and it was a little bit more abrupt than I would like, but on reflection, I really appreciate that we get a story, a pretty rich story that certainly got uh, me wanting more. I've given you a bit of the synopsis, so I'm not going to go into the plot, but definitely one calorie shell for plot. Uh, for characters, I would also give a calorie shell to Binti for the characters. The main character, of course, is Binti, but we also get to meet 
a number of other characters, some of which are humanoid, some of which are uh, of whom are not, uh, some are inanimate, and they all kind of work together in this um, in this in this world. There are some not as complex uh, character relationships as I would have liked to see, but enough that got me thinking about what it means for different kinds of people to be on a spaceship going to a place that is incredibly um, diverse and how to deal with how to deal with that. So full cowrie shell for characters. World building also gets a full cowrie shell. Uh, um, Nnedi Okorafor is amazing. This is the I think this is a second or third book of hers that I've read and she has a wonderful ability to just make the world that she creates seem kind of normal and I really like that so it was believable I believed that the the village that Binti came from I believed the spaceship I believed everything that needed to happen to get Binti from her village to the spaceship I believed that there was this university it did seem like this world was just a world that she was talking about uh, so I really appreciated that and I think her world building is very good so a full carry shell for the world building uh, for queer content, I don't recall any queer content at all. I don't recall any queer characters. There is a love, a love uh, story within the main plot, and it's a heterosexual one, and that just doesn't get questioned. It's just normal. So um, zero for queer content. Is it Afrofuturist? Absolutely. We have an amazing mixture of the ancestral and the futuristic together in this story that I really appreciate and that's one of the things I absolutely love about Afrofuturism and I had the opportunity to listen to Yatasha Womack speak and Yatasha Womack is she wrote a book called Afrofuturism which is right here um, and it's a, it's a non-fiction text about Afrofuturism and I heard her speak in Toronto and one of the things that she said in her talk uh, and she was actually describing the uh, cover of this book she was saying that one of the things that she loves about Afrofuturism is that you can't really tell uh, where the line of demarcation is between the ancient and the sacred and the futuristic and, and the um, and the speculative right so she used this picture as an example and she said when we look at this we don't know if this particular person is um, somebody from the future or somebody from the past right it, it could be a blending of both it could be one it could be the other it could be neither and so in this book we we see Okorafor blending uh, ancestral knowledge and magic and blending that with um, with futuristic things like technology and it just seems so seamless how that happens so I really appreciated that um, there was another piece that kind of speaks to Afrofuturism and the world building, which is mathematics and science. And this is truly a science fiction novella. We get to see math as magic, and I'm not going to say more about that, uh, but it, it was really amazing to see that connection. Uh, so I would say a full cowrie shell for Afrofuturistic. Does this book challenge norms? Yeah, I mean... To the extent that science fiction novels challenge the norm of our regular lives, sure. But what I'm looking for, for this particular criteria, is are the gender relationships uh, challenged? Is class challenged? Is race challenged? Is sexual orientation and gender identity challenged? Is disability challenged? Are, are the kinds of um, stereotypes and belief systems that run the, the oppression that we see in the world, are those actively uh, engaged here in the books? Are they challenged? And unfortunately, I can't say that I saw a lot of that. I mean, there were really typical power structures. Um, and and there was also, there's also some violence that was so subtle, um, it almost went unnoticed by me for a couple of pages and then when I realized what had happened I became very disturbed and so on one hand it's great that Okorfor and she's she's done this with her other books she weaves in the themes of violence specifically violence against women um, and and then sort of leaves us to deal with and to watch how 
the characters contend with what's happened to them. Um, and so I guess I'll give half a cowrie shell because there is a way that Binti has to deal with something that happens to her that is unusual and that challenges our beliefs about the resilience of young women and the ingenuity of young women even when they have been violated. And then is it aspirational? The seventh cowrie shell, 100% is aspirational. Just like I discussed in Moon Girl, and if you haven't watched that video, I'll link it below. Uh, we've got a, a girl, a young woman, a black young woman, an African young woman, who truly knows her value. She knows that she's brilliant. She knows that she's smart. She knows that she can contribute. She knows that she deserves praise. She knows that, that she is exceptional in the galaxies and that that sense of her own potential is what drives her to leave everything that she knows to go on this amazing challenge and that is the essence of aspiration and that's one of the reasons why i love afrofuturism especially afrofuturism with female characters so that is it so we've got uh, one for plot, one for characters, we've got one for world building, zero for queer, one for Afrofuturistic, uh, one for aspirational and challenging norms. I'm going to say half for challenging norms. So we're at five and a half, I think. <laughs> five and a half calories for this. All right. So that is, uh, that's my uh, rating system for Binti. Um, we're going to pause right now and I hope that you enjoyed the buddy chat with Pretty Brown Eye Reader. Thanks for watching Onyx Pages. Well, hi, I'm Alicia and my channel is Pretty Brown Eye Reader. And I read a lot of different types of books, um, mostly African American books, but I read everything um, except for science fiction. And so that's going to be interesting for this discussion. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Jerry Damali Sojourner Campbell, and my uh, channel is called Onyx Pages, and I read only science fiction, magical realism, <laughs> fantasy, and Afrofuturism. Um, and uh, I'm I'm a new booktuber uh, compared to Alicia, uh, so I'm really looking forward to to this discussion. Okay. Well, I, I really appreciate you doing the buddy read with me because, um, like I said, science fiction is really, really new to me. <laughs> um, and I've had, I struggled with it in the past. I've tried to read like Octavia Butler. Mm. I couldn't do it. It's <laughs> not easy. And I, I mean, no. I, I think for me with science fiction, fiction, already, you already have to suspend belief that this is a real thing and so science fiction kind of adds another layer of disbelief to it and so i've struggled with it yeah. <laughs> so yeah that um so science fiction is not something that i'm familiar with i find um i read i think it was dawn i think of um okay. of octavia butler's work i read it first once and i had absolutely no idea what i was reading like i, I read i read the whole book and at the end of it, I had no idea what I had read. And then some years oh, wow. passed, and then I read it, I read it again. And I think that it's, I like the way that you describe it, that there are these, you have to suspend your belief once and then mm -hmm. suspend it again. Um, mm -hmm. That's now become one of the things I really enjoy about science fiction. But some of okay. the things that I read right now, it sort of sprinkles our everyday reality into the story enough that we can yeah. bridge to this fantasy world. And that's what I'm finding about now I've read, now I've read everything that Octavia Butler has written and some of her stuff is more dense oh. than others, but she's got some really beautiful stories that you can see. You can see the metaphor that she's trying to draw between like a an urban vampire and just okay. being black and living in North America. Right. Like it's just, okay. It, it gets um it gets easier but you might like it, if science fiction isn't is still not your thing you might like magical realism um stories where like it's 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 your everyday story it's your contemporary right. except one person can fly like you know besides that everything else is just normal and it the, the magic in in those stories are really it's really subtle so that that right. might be your gem have 
hopefully not, we won't get too far off tangent today, but um, have you read uh, Mama Day by Gloria Naylor? No. That That's probably like the only magical realism that I've ever read that I really enjoy. Oh, I so I have tried experiment with that a little bit, but I, I really like Gloria Naylor. So oh, cool. I think that's probably a lot of why I like that book too. Cool. It's her writing. Okay. So today we're going to talk about Minty. Uh, the book. Yeah, you got your copy. <laughs> and mine right here too. <laughs> and I have a library copy because I'm just a library person. <laughs> <laughs> and um the way i heard about the book is of course through booktube i've seen um several booktubers talk about it and when they said it was science fiction i was like mm, maybe <laughs> <laughs> and so i was like i'll probably never uh read it <laughs> but I, you know i kept it in the back of my mind and so when you uh, put up that you wanted to uh, read it, I was like, okay, I probably, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Especially doing with a buddy read, then I can probably do it. So how did you hear about the book? Um, so I, um, I founded a, an online Afrofuturism reading group called okay. Solar Powered. And it's been around since 2015 and we meet on Facebook. And uh, so we meet online and in person once a month. So you okay. can join us online if you ever want to try okay. another book um okay and uh Nidhi Okorafor is one of the readers that one of the authors that we read um okay and so one of the members of the group works at a bookstore and oh. I went to visit her at the bookstore one day and she's like have you heard of Binti and I was like no and she's like oh my god and so she she just showed me this book and that's how I found out about Binti but I had read a previous book um by a core for called uh who fears death and i mm. actually think it's up there somewhere i actually think yeah this one who fears death and mm -hmm. i actually think that binti is a friend of one of the people in here because there's also a okay. character here called binti um so i wasn't i don't know what the relationship is between these two books but that's how i found out about about Binti and why I wanted to read it. And also it was really short, so I, I knew I could blow through it fairly quickly. Okay. I also did, okay. a YouTuber as well talk about it as well. I think that that cozy book nook, um, she talked about it, about Binti. Okay. I think that Freeform Lady, I think she's uh, talked about another book of a core force, um, something about a phoenix, maybe? Yeah, Book of the Phoenix. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Book of the Phoenix. Okay. Which I haven't cool. read. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, as you might notice I tend to read one author and try to read everything. Oh, before okay. I read someone else. Mhm. Mm yeah. So, anyway. She's I start out doing that, but I never can get that quite done. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you're always around the library, so you just have too much yeah. temptation, I would think, right? Yeah. It is it's a whole lot of temptation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've talked about a little bit about our familiarity with science fiction. So what did you like about Binti? I liked a lot um, about okay. the book. Should we start off with like a brief synopsis of what happens? In oh, I guess so, because people that are watching it probably haven't, may have not. You go, you can do the synopsis. Yeah, okay, so, um, so Binti is, is she, is she 16 in this book? Anyway, she's a, She's a young, she's a young woman who mm -hmm. is part of a tribe, the Himba people in Namibia. Um, so this is in a futuristic continental Africa. And um, she gets, she, her people are people who uh, engage with the land and engage in technology, but they also don't move around a lot. So she comes from a very sheltered, um, sheltered home. And at the beginning of the book, she decides that she is going to take up the offer of a scholarship to study at a prestigious intergalactic university. And in order to do that, though, because she knows her parents and her family will not support the decision, she essentially runs away from home. Um, but this is science fiction, so she flies away from home and mm -hmm. uh, she gets onto a spaceship and this tells the story of what happens on that spaceship as she makes her way to the university. And um, it's not a spoiler because it's on the back to say that while she's 
in that journey, um, the spaceship gets taken over by uh, a race of aliens who have beef with her university and engage in a lot of violence. And so she has to figure out how to survive that and what her next steps are going to be. Okay, that's a good synopsis. That's that's there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what did you like about the book? Um, I liked a lot of things about the book. Um, I liked the, I liked Binti as a character. Mm -hmm. I love her confidence. I love her confidence in her abilities. I love right. her love of community because as you know, so many, uh, there are so many points in the story where she's ridiculed, scorned, judged because of her, her race and because mm -hmm. of her culture and ethnicity. And um, so like we see that like the, 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 what she has on her face is, I don't know how it's pronounced, um, Ojitse? O o yeah, o o o o yeah. O <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> and it's, it's um, a mixture of clay and jasmine flowers, mm -hmm. um, but it has magical qualities and properties to it. She puts it in her hair, in her braids, and on her face, and, and she covers her whole body with it. And she gets made fun of that at the beginning of the book. But then as the book continues, we see that this is actually a magical element that mm -hmm. effectively keeps her alive. It right. becomes a bargaining tool, right? Um, so I like how Okorafor doesn't pull any punches at the beginning um, with uh, exposing us to racism and, mm -hmm. and sexism and ageism. But then as the character develops and as the plot develops we see how all of those things are actually strengths that that contribute to her resilience so mm -hmm. i really liked that part of the of the story um yeah that's so i really liked what about you what do you like about the book i think the shortness is what helped me <laughs> <laughs> <That was awesome. laughs> You know, I, I, I've been honest about my science fiction um, <laughs> limitations. And yeah. one of the things is all this description about, you know, these planets and these alien types of things. But to me, she gave just enough description that you could imagine the aliens. You could imagine what Binti or the people she was, people or aliens she was interacting with. You could imagine them for yourself. And so I like the shortness of her writing and um, not giving too much detail. That actually was a plus for me, and that helped move the story along for me as well. Mm. <laughs> yeah. cool. well your, your plus is actually my minus. <laughs> okay. So. Maybe, maybe your next question might be, what did we not like about it? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say, so go ahead. And <laughs> I didn't like the shortness. I, she didn't give me enough. I didn't get it from aliens. I didn't get it from magic. <laughs> Right, uh, it was just enough for me because <laughs> if she had to throw another one in, I'd probably be like, "Uh oh, oh, I'm done. I'm not gonna do this anymore." <laughs> so I, I felt like this was, you know, when you go to a restaurant and you get an appetizer and it's so good, mm -hmm. and you're just, yes, right. I hope, like, I hope the main is actually gonna live up to this. Like, that's how I felt. Like I right. felt like this was an appetizer that should have been a main. Like I should have had a whole plate of binti and I just had this little napkin of binti. So I didn't, I didn't like that. I mean, mm -hmm. at the same time, it's a trilogy. Right. It introduces us to a world. It's very mm -hmm. good, like a core for, for beginners, right? Like in terms of people who have never read her work before. Like I, I feel right. like, for like, me, right? Like, you know, the fact that we can both like it and we have very, <laughs> Opposing views about science fiction. I think that right. she did her job, right? Because we both right. and we're both <laughs> talking about it, so she did her job. Yeah. Um, but I feel like there were things like I I wanted to know. I wanted to know. I didn't know any. I don't know anything about this university. I don't know anything mm -hmm. about the um the conflict between the alien race that invaded the ship and those mm -hmm. at the actual university. Um, right. There was a love interest that she just that just ended, um, right. that I would have liked to know more about. I would have liked to know more about the different species 
of um, students or even the people on the ship. I would have loved to know more about her family, about what their the family business is. And right. I would have also loved to, to learn more about the world because I don't really understand. The, the, there's this interesting relationship between like futuristic Africa and like ancestral Africa. And it's, okay. she connects it, right? So like she's got these magical rituals that we might associate with like ancestors and then mm -hmm. this technology which we would associate with like the future mm -hmm. and it's married so beautifully but we don't really understand why it's just kind of presented to us in the book so i would have liked her to i would have liked more context for what's happening because i think it the book kind of takes for granted that the reader will be like okay she's going to a university because she got a scholarship because she's really smart and then this thing happens and I, I want to know more about how do the scholarships work and what's this university and what's its purpose and is it a good place to be or does she ever get to come back like mm -hmm. all, all this stuff so there are a lot of questions that I think because of the size of the book the length of the book um that didn't get answered for me so that's something I didn't I wasn't happy with okay I can understand that because I, I felt like him but I did want to know more about the tribe because you know it sounded very interesting why don't they ever go out kind of thing why do they shun the outside so it, it's got to be some backstory there but at the same time i was kind of happy that she didn't quite stay there because i was afraid that you know too much talking about it would make me like mm -mm, i don't want to do this because i don't even really know what these people are are they really people because um with her writing at first i didn't know whether Benji was supposed to be considered a human or not yeah. that kind of thing so the shortness actually kind of helped me that's that's why i i still i did like the shortness yeah. um for me what i didn't like was i really couldn't tell what was real and which i know this is probably you know the the part about science fiction i couldn't tell what was supposed to be a real like word or real thing and i don't know how to 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 do that and i guess it's probably just more of having to keep reading science fiction to be able to to figure it out hmm. i don't know if that makes sense i i it <laughs> makes sense but can you give an example of a thing that you weren't sure was real or not mm. I'm trying to think um well her talking about her um little device her astrolab so I was thinking, okay, I'll assume that this is not, I hope I said it, said it right. Um, I assume that this is something that is a, a um, something that she's created, that uh, a core four has created for this story. But at the same time, I was like, well, that kind of sounds like maybe something true. I don't know. Mm. So that, that kind of thing. And I, I noticed some words were italicized in my copy. So I was like, okay, that's probably a made up kind of thing but some some weren't yeah yeah so i i i was actually gonna google or jidze to see if it was an mm -hmm. actual thing okay i know that i've definitely seen pictures of different communities that will put mm -hmm. pictures of clay on their face right. and their hair. so i've seen that before so i i i resisted the urge to find out whether or not that word was a made-up word or not right and even the is it the edam the yes uh, yes uh -huh. little thing that she carries mm -hmm. so, um that was something that, so i i definitely hear what you're saying about not knowing whether or not you know something was real or or wasn't okay so but i think that's maybe just something getting used to reading the genre that probably maybe will help or something yeah i mean i it's interesting talking to you about this because <laughs> I'm, I'm now thinking about things that I automatically do when I read science fiction. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I do is assume that everything is real for the purpose of the book. So mm. it, it never even, it never even dawned on me to think about whether or not she made it up except for the Ojitse. And that's the only because it had like the, the cultural element. Mm -hmm. but I've seen so many things in the worlds that have been created, like people can do things that may or may not, they may or may not be able to do in my waking reality. Mm -hmm. But 
I guess like one of the reasons I really like Afrofuturism is because it helps me imagine Black people, African people um, in different ways. So okay. I find it really liberating. I find that the image of a teenager or a young adult traveling on a spaceship to go to an interlact intergalactic university, mm -hmm. I find that so liberating that I don't even care about whether any of it is plausible. Like I'm, I just feel so good with that image. And then I look at the world today and I'm just like, I want black girls to feel like they can reach the stars. So part of the reason I read it is to feel uplifted. And so because of that, I, I, I don't often ask those questions about whether this is real or not. As long as it could be, I'm, I'm, satis I'm satisfied. So I, I like your perspective on that because it, it, it helps me sort of understand another, another view. Okay. All right. Well, let's keep on talking. Um, what was your favorite character in the book? Ah. Uh, well, Bella. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you have one? I, I think because it's written from her point of view, mm -hmm. um, I would say Binti because I just feel like I didn't really get to know a lot about the other characters, but my second favorite character was um the Meduse who she oh um oh, cool. that's actually who was my favorite character I mean Bitsy of course you know Tonto character and all that but I felt like he had I always like when authors have like a a minor character that is like a mirror maybe to the to the the major character and I felt like he was because he's this warrior Medusa thing um because she calls it it. <laughs> um, and so we see him start out as this warrior, but he has a full story, uh, like arc to me, because by the end, he's a student. And so he gets, you know, he starts as this one thing, but goes to something else by the end. Very much like Benty, we see her as being this rebellious, well, well she's a rebel she's leaving her family going to university so she ends where she starts but he starts out as something and he ends as something totally different mm -hmm. not with the same plan like she had so I, I really that was my favorite character in the story yeah yeah I there's a, a part in the book where a core for has been T saying he reminds me of like my brother he he reminds me of someone yeah. like she's able yeah. to through the, the difference in his species. And she's also able to see through um, the fact that he was trying to kill her. Um, yeah. And he, she sees something different and they become friends, which actually, if I can just go back to your question about what I didn't like about the book. Okay. Um, and I've actually found this in a lot of science fiction is it's, it's the violence against women and how we are encouraged to not even pay attention to it. Like it's, so for example, um, and I guess this is a bit, well, I'll try to make it not a spoiler, but we find out towards the end of the novella that something has been done to Binti that she didn't, she didn't agree to. Um, it was non-consensual and it had a very significant impact on her, right? It changed her life. Mm -hmm. And it happened in the context of war, right? And I remember reading it and I, I remember thinking, okay, that happened, no big deal. And then I kept on reading and then mm -hmm. I kept on reading and then I kept on reading and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's been like, she's like something violent has happened to her. And it took me a couple of scenes to realize that that had happened. And I guess it's, I don't know if this is something I didn't like about the book, but it, it might actually just be something I didn't like about my, the fact that I've become used to violence, certain kinds of violence that I don't even notice it mm -hmm. until it's, until it's over. Right. And, and that I, it really got me thinking that like she was harmed and I, I didn't notice. And then, so that was, I don't know if Okorafor was planning on, on that being a part of the reaction, but that was that was something that I that was uncomfortable. So I guess I won't say that that's something I didn't like about the book, but 
it was a part of the read that was notable for me. And I feel like kind of convicted in that because I I didn't I didn't catch it as violence, I guess, you know, like serious violence. I, I don't want to say this. You know, the suspension of the belief. I was oh. hmm. That I I was thinking that what happened to her was um I don't know if I was thinking that it was actually violent Hmm. that's interesting I I feel like she was told that A was going to happen right and then B happened right and B B was much more of a game changer than A right like I I feel like she was manipulated and and that th- that wasn't resolved. Like the, I remember reading on the mm-hmm. page where she realizes what has happened to her, and but in her description, it um it was almost kind of very great. It wasn't. I guess <laughs> I don't. I'm trying not to say. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so it almost to me. <laughs> Okay, that's this is another thing with the science fiction. This, um, yeah. I thought it was a science fiction thing because I was like, okay, so she's not gonna give detail on the actual experience of what what happened. Yeah, hmm, this has got me. I'm gonna have to reread that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I put hmm. sticky on it and okay, like, <sighs> yeah, like the, yeah. So okay, anyway, I all right. So I guess the realization mm-hmm. comes to me on page 81 okay. um, and not necessarily that, that that's where it happened, but that's mm-hmm. where, yeah, that's where I, that's where I realized, uh oh, that's, yeah. It's kind of hard to talk about it without spoiling it, but yeah. for people who are watching who haven't read it, I don't want to. No, I don't want to. Yeah. So. I'm gonna go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of went way over my head, I think. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so what were we talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, got my mind like, oh man, I, you know, I just missed that. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out because it is. That's what happens in a novella, right? Like everything is <laughs> do, 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 and then you're just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about our favorite tool that um a core four puts in there. Okay. What's your favorite? It's 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 a tie, but okay. between the two most obvious ones, the would you say okay. the e the edam? Is it edam? I think it is the yeah. edam though. Um Okay. Cause you know what? Like there's so many things that as a kid I collected, whether it was seeds mm-hmm. or, you know, or like little shiny pieces of glass or jewelry. And to, to think that you can have something and you just, you're attracted to it, right. but you don't really realize how much majesty is within it until like eight years later when something happens to you right and then you think right. of all the, you think of all the times where you could have lost it where you were thinking of throwing it away you know mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it's like this amazing thing like this you right. find this rock and then you figure out that it's you know a diamond and it's been in your house for all this time and you or or you know it's an heirloom something you find in a crate um and so with with that was my that was my favorite tool because it's such a powerful a, a pa- powerful magical tool and mm-hmm. and she's also unlike the ojize she doesn't actually understand how this thing works right right so it's uh-huh. working through her but she's not completely in control of it so i like the idea that as the books continue she'll she will hopefully i don't know um but she'll okay. have an opportunity to get to know this better and as she gets to know this tool better she gets to know herself better Okay. Potential better. What about you? 
I actually had I had to um, the Astro Lab. Yeah, because I was thinking that is a cool thing to have all your information <laughs> like basically there. <laughs> and um, so I like that. And then the Ojise, I thought was a great tool because of the healing powers to it. Mm-hmm. And so I thought those were my favorite two things that what she was used. The Astro Lab. I honestly don't know what it is. Like when she was traveling, the guy read it and said, okay, you're going to university. He knew all about her people. So it was like a, a ID kind of thing, I think, that had a whole bunch of um, information in it. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was, that was weird. I was actually nervous that she was, okay. some of her stuff was going to be taken away from her one when she crossed the borders. Yeah. And okay. And then that, anyway, we might get to it later. Okay. Go ahead. Because it's fine. <laughs> um when um when they touch her hair her hair gets touched right <laughs> and i actually thought about um what's her name phoebe robinson's book about don't touch my hair <laughs> <And> I, was, <laughs> I read it on the bus I was like, and I was dang like, i mean even in a in an alien world yeah. they still touch <laughs> hair <laughs> i'm like haven't you learned it's been light years and you have your fingers all up in my hair. Yeah. So that was 100%. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's stuff like that that just made me chuckle, right? Because yeah. there are certain universal experiences or near universal mm-hmm. experiences that Black African women experience. And I, I just love how she just sprinkled them in. You know, right. at the beginning you know, just to, just to make sure that everybody knows this is a black woman and there's, you know, there's a, there's a shared experience right here. Right. So yeah. this is, I know we're talking about aliens, but we're talking about a black woman having an alien, an experience of aliens, yes. literally. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your favorite scene in the, or favorite passage in the, the novella? Ooh, I, <laughs> everywhere. I actually, and I now I forgot which one it is, so now I'm excited to see what I said. But I I put a um, I put a sticky that said this is my favorite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is my favorite page. So I don't know what happened. So let me just um. Oh yeah. So okay, I'll just read the two paragraphs. Um, I saw several of them look at each other. Some murmured to one another. This is page seventy six. Others, I did not know well enough to tell what they were doing. As I spoke, I fell into a rhythm, a meditative state, very much like my math-induced ones, except I was fully present, and before long, tears were falling from my eyes. I told them in detail about watching Heru's chest burst open, desperately grabbing food, staying in that room waiting to die, the Eden saving me, and not knowing how or why or what. And what I wrote here was, this is my favorite page, I love the power that she gains from speaking her truth. Um, I like the way that she, I like the way that a, a core for turns math into magic and turns magic mm-hmm. into math yeah. and science. And I love that. And so, and, and the magical, um, like the skill that she has, like the way she uses math to calm, like she right. drops into meditation. So what I liked about that passage was that as she's speaking about what happened, this terrible thing that happened, she's getting calmer and stronger and louder and speaking with mm-hmm. more conviction. And mm-hmm. that's happened to me where I've been very afraid to say things that were difficult, but then once I started saying them, like my shoulders go back and I, I become more powerful and I actually feel like I can do this. And I mm. loved how that was described. Yeah. Okay. My pa- pa- favorite passage actually is the last, <laughs> last paragraph. It's on page 90. Okay. And she says, I sat in the silence of my room, looking at my Edan as I sent out a signal to my family with my astrolab. Outside was dark and I looked into the sky at the stars, knowing that the pink one was home. The first to answer was my mother yeah. and I was like okay a core for she just hooked me ready to go pick up the second one I was like, ah, it's okay. <laughs> and that, that passage I was like she wouldn't say that, that to the end just like boom 
me? Okay, I gotta go get the second one. Now let me see what her mom was talking about. Know. <laughs> you know. And so, uh, because yeah. we know that she's supposed to be, you know, alienated from her family now, but her mother still reaches out to her, and it makes me wonder. Okay, well, what's gonna happen in the next one? Yeah. So I just love her writing for that. Just giving you that eh, to go ahead and pick up the second thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then if you look at the acknowledgments right after that, the first thing she says is, "I'd like to thank my daughter." Oh yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. it's it's really nice. Yeah, that mm -hmm. that was a very lovely passage. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's hard not to read um, Binti Home. Have you started it? No, I haven't started it yet. Yeah, I wanted to keep this pure because <laughs> I, I they would bleed together. And there's also right. Binti Warrior, which is the first word, right. I think. I don't know when it comes out, but yeah. So that was my favorite passage. Okay. Well, what did it, the book or well, the novella inspire in you with reading it? Um... I think I'm just I'm just looking at the picture over here. Um, right, that is that's a gorgeous cover. I just I love I could just look at it all day. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> it. I just you see the stars, you see you see the blackness mm -hmm. of the earth, and I didn't notice this, but if you look towards the bottom, there's something that looks like it could be like a metal, some kind of metal armor that she's wearing or it could uh -huh. maybe it's not metal maybe it's a scarf that has a metallic sheen to it right right I just I just love I love that she puts a girl because in a lot of ways this this like one of the tropes that we see in here is like first day of school right like the weirdness of first day of school and everybody's looking at me and do I belong? And right. I'm going to this place and I had to leave my family to go to this place. And like, will I belong with my family anymore? Like, mm -hmm. like there's those themes I think are not unusual themes for us. They're familiar to us. Right. Um, but she layers on, you know, other, other things. Like, and I, I think that there's something validating about imagining these stories of teenagehood and young adulthood. Um, and and seeing them for the alienating things that they are like really just saying like yeah it really super it does feel like going on a spaceship like for people who have had to like i i lived at home when i went to you know when i went to university but a lot of people didn't they they left their home and went somewhere else and right. maybe that's exactly what it felt like i i certainly know that there have been times in my life where i have felt like i literally went on a spaceship and nobody knows what or what i am right, right. And so I just, I just love that this book tells the story and, and that we see her being strong through it all. Like, even when she's like, not even sure if she's going to survive this, she's right. still strong. Right. You know? And I, that was what was inspiring for me. She's powerful throughout, even in her weakest moments, mm -hmm. in her moments of the, the most beautiful surrender, she's still powerful. Right. She never gives that up. No. <laughs> I think it the book kind of inspired me to think beyond what's happening in the world now. Think about a world that's totally different. And I never really thought about science fiction. I always thought of it as just something made up, but it actually, you know, can make me think about don't concentrate on what's going on here. Let's think about something that could happen later. Something that looks totally different from the, what's going on now. And so I really um, liked that about it. And I didn't expect to feel that way about reading it. So I, I was really shocked by that. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any any additional thoughts you want to talk about, about BNT? <laughs> I'm ready to read the next story. I really, I, uh -huh. you know, you really reminded me of how she left it off and that, mm -hmm. that you know, that door opener that she puts at the end. I do want to, mm -hmm. I do want to read more. And because we know that the next book is called Binti Home, right? Mm -hmm. No, it, does she return home? Does she make a home um, at the university? Like, what does that even mean? Right? Yeah. Uh, right? I like, don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm the next one. I hope that we do a video about the next one too. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm actually surprised that I'm looking forward to reading another science fiction. Uh, 
Nice. I may become a convert. Yeah. It's all about, listen, we, we are here. It's not, we are here. The Afro Futures, I was ready for some pretty brown eyes. Okay. We're ready. <laughs> We're ready. Okay. <laughs> I really appreciate you know taking time out of your day to talk with me about this. Yeah. It just has been wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for saying yes. Um, <laughs> no problem. For trusting, uh, you know, this stranger from Toronto, Canada, who's like, we this together. So thank you. For that. This is wonderful. That's the fun part of book two for me is meeting different people from around the world and just that you know having a, a mutual love for books and, and writing and it's, it's just awesome i really enjoy it it's using social media for for good i like it finally it's true yeah and thank you very much for facilitating a conversation and oh, no. fantastic no problem i thought we would only have like a 15 since it's just a novella i was like oh we'll just be like 15 minutes we're right. almost at 45 i know i know <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna um I'm gonna this and uh and so we can put it on our channels and more people okay. can can join the Binti Okorafor love. Oh, and thank you yes. to Nettie Okorafor. Oh, of course, of course. Right? Of course. Right? <laughs> thank you for creating this amazing, liberating world that can bring together a science a science fiction agnostic <laughs> and a convert, and we can come together <laughs> for Binti. Yes. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. That's awesome.